Now I'm sure that <clears throat> all of you people have at some time or other seen pictures of an old steam train running <clears throat> and on the steam train they had a fly ball governor and you would see these balls flying around and you knew that they had something to do with the speed that the train ran at. But a lot of people have never really been clear on how these fly ball governors operated. And uh, prior to having electronic controls to mean constant speed on engines, this was a very early constant speed device, and the way they operated was by centrifugal force. A uh, centrifugal force, everybody at some time or another when they were a kid has tied a stone to a string and whirled it around their head, and centrifugal force makes the stone fly out away from you. And these are the same thing. Basically this flyball governor system is tied in either to your steam engine or sometimes to a gasoline engine. And the faster they go, the more these balls fly out under centrifugal force. And as you can see, when they fly out, there's a mechanism here which lifts this yoke and moves this lever through an arc. Now I had this previously hooked up for something else, but the key to all this is in this lever that moves up and down. So you have to imagine if you had a link running from that lever to your steam admission valve or to your throttle on a gasoline engine, you could set it up so you dialed in the speed that you wanted and once you had reached the speed you wanted it would stay constant. If you put a load on the engine and it started to slow down, the lever would move and give more steam or more gas to speed your engine back up so that you didn't have a big die off in RPM as soon as you put a load on it. And conversely, if you started your engine with no load and it started to rev out of control, these would fly up and this would move and shut the gas off or shut the steam off. Now, as a temporary measure to run this thing, I've just tied it into the spindle on my small mill with a belt drive. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to turn the RPM up and down on the uh, mill. And as the RPM increases and decreases, you'll see these balls move in and out and you'll see this link move through an arc which would, in an original machine, have controlled either the steam valve or the gasoline valve. So here we go at our very lowest speed. Now at a low speed you don't see any movement in the metal and you don't see any movement in the link. But as I turn the speed up, the balls start to fly out and the further they fly out, the more the oak lifts and the more that lever goes. So this was totally an automated device, it didn't need any manual control, and this is what was used to govern a constant speed on early steam engines, and even on some of the early petrol engines. And a lot of the uh, control system was very dependent on the strength of this spring right here. A weaker spring would let the engine rev higher, and a stronger spring wouldn't let it rev as high. And sometimes there was even a secondary spring built into the system so that you could adjust the speed on the fly without having to get in here and mess with this spring, which is not really accessible when things are running. So this may give you a bit of insight into how these old flyball governors actually worked. And for the time they were very efficient and they worked very well. I've built a couple of these and I've installed them on models I've built and uh, I'm rather amazed myself at how well they run. So that was all I wanted to show you today, how a flyball governor operated and how they actually tied into an engine's controls to hold the speed as a constant. Thanks for having a look.